Welcome back. Today we are going through lesson 3.3, three, three, which is all about inverse functions. This lesson is set up in a way that you can go through it yourself the first time. So I would encourage you to pause the video for now, go through the steps. There's A through F, um, and then come back and see if what you have is what I have as well. So for this situation, we're kind of using these steps on the left to figure some key things out. So on the graph, you can see that we have two functions, one in red, that's g of x, and one in blue, that's f of x. So it's starting by just asking you what are the values at these different x points. So at negative 7, I can see that it's down at negative 3. At negative 1, it's at 0. At 1, looks like it's at 1. And then at 3, it's at 2. And at 5, it is at 3. So there's f of x. Then for g of x, I can see that it's at negative 7 at negative 3. And then it's at negative 1. And then positive 1, 1. And at 2, it's up at 3. And then at 3, it's up at 5. So those are my table of values. Now I'm going to use those to find some other things. So using only the table, that means don't look at the whole function, just look at the table of values. We're going to write our domain. So the domain of f of x here is uh, negative 7, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. Those are the x values in the table. All right, then it's asking us for the range of g of x. So again, the range is the possible y values. So for g of x, that's negative 7 negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. All right, then it asks for the range, so the y values, for f of x. So if I write those out, it's negative 3, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then it asks for the domain, the x values, of g of x. So that is negative 3, 0, 1, 2, and three. So then it asks, do the two lines reflect over the line y equals x? So that means do the y values of one equal the x values of the other and vice versa? And in this case, they do. So we would say yes, it does reflect. Each of those points reflects from one side to the other of that line. So we can see that with a few points there. Okay. So then, whoops, for part B, now we have a new function. So now we have ordered pairs for f of x. And step four says write the ordered pairs for g of x by switching the x and y values. So for this one, we are going to switch the x and y values. So for g of x, we're going to have 0, negative 6. So that point, we're just flipping the x and y. Then we've got 2, negative 2, 3, 0, 5, 4, and 6, 6. So those would be my switched points. Then it says to graph those ordered pairs and draw the line for each function. So I'm going to plot those, and they'll show up in just a second. Okay, so you can see those two lines there. I plotted all my points. And then it asks, do the two lines reflect over y equals x? So again, looking at those points, do they reflect equal distance from that dashed line y equals x? And in this case, they do. All right, so then for C, we have, um, it's gonna work, ask us to find an equation for G. We're gonna switch x and y values in the function, and then solve for y. So in this case, we're going to take the x and y and switch them. And then like it says, solve for y. So I'm going to isolate that y value. So I'm going to get x minus 6 equals 3y. And then I'm going to divide everything by 3 and get 1 third minus 2 equals y. 
And then we're going to graph those two functions. So again, those lines will show up in a second. So I've graphed those two functions. And our lines, if we did it right, should reflect over. So we can kind of check our work here by looking at a couple key points. So on f of x, the blue line, we're looking at where it's at, at negative 1. And I can see that it is up at 3. And that means that on g of x, the point at g of 3 should be at negative 1. So it's reversed. So we've looked at three different ways to look at inverse functions. We looked at from a table. We've looked at from ordered pairs. And now we've looked at equations. So let's look at D here. So in example D here, you can see two things going on. So question 11 says, does this graph pass the vertical line test? So if we, if we draw a vertical line anywhere on that parabola, we would see that it never intersects more than once. So we would say, yes, that does pass the vertical line test. So question 12 asks us to sketch a graph of f of x that's reflected over y equals x. So let's take some key points here and reflect them over. So I can see that there's a point at 2, 1. So I can flip that to 1, 2. I can see there's a point at 4, 3. So I'm going to put that at 3, 4. So I can see that it's going to go something like this. And then same thing on the other side. So I can see that there's a point, it's kind of hard to tell, but if I reflect those points over the line, it's gonna go this way. And then it says, does it pass the vertical line test? And in that case, I can draw a vertical line that would cross that reflected function twice. So that would be a no. That means the inverse is not a function. All right, so then 13 is looking at g of x here. So it's saying, does that pass a vertical line test? And the answer is yes, it does. And if I reflect that one over the line y equals x, so again, just taking some key points and kind of seeing what it looks like, I can see, let's see, there's a point at 7, 4, that I could reflect over to 4, 7, and I can see, and it looks like this. And um, a linear function is going to pass the vertical line test still. So that's a yes on both. So the linear function, both the function and the inverse are a function. For the quadratic, it was not. When we reflected it, it was not still a function. Okay, let's look at E here. All right, so it says f of x is 5x minus 3, g of x is 1 fifth x plus 3 fifths. They are inverse functions. So if you remember from a previous lesson, we can compose them or put them together to see what happens. So let's start with f of g of x. So that means that into 5x minus 3, I'm going to plug g of x, which is 1 fifth x plus three-fifths. So when I simplify that, I get x plus three minus three. So when I distribute, I get x plus three, and then I get minus three. Three minus three cancels out, and we're left with x. So when we compose those together, we got an x. Let's do it the other way. So now into g of x, one-fifth x plus three-fifths, I am going to plug in f of x, which is 5x minus 3. So let's simplify there. I would get x minus 3 fifths plus 3 fifths. And we can see in that one, minus 3 fifths plus 3 fifths leaves us with just x. So when we compose two functions that are inverses of each other, we have to be left with x only. All right, let's move on to f here. So f says, let f of x be 2x plus 10. To find g of x, switch the x and y values and solve for y. So we did this before. So we're going to switch it to x equals 2y plus 10. And then we're going to solve for y. So if I do that, I would get x minus 10 
equals 2y, and then dividing by 10, I would get, or sorry, dividing by 2, I would get 1 half x minus 5 equals y. Now we are going to compose those together again. So let's do f of x. So 2x plus 10. We're going to replace the 2x plus 10 with the inverse function that we just got, which is 1 half x minus 5. And when I compose those together, I get x minus 10 plus 10, which leaves me with x. And when I do it in reverse, I do 1 half x minus 5, and our x in this case is 2x plus 10. So when I compose those together, I get x plus 5 minus 5, and that leaves us with x. All right, so let's kind of sum this all up here now that you've gone through all those steps. So some key takeaways that we need to make sure we understand. Two functions, and we call them f and g throughout here, that undo each other are called inverse functions. So that means that the inverse of a function interchanges, so flips the members of the ordered pairs of the original function. So if we're looking at an xy pair, the inverse is the flipped version of that. The domain of the original function, the x values, is the range of the inverse function. So the x and y's switch. And the range of the original function becomes the domain of the inverse function. Inverse functions, we saw on the graphs, always reflect over the line y equals x, because those x and y are flipping. We also learned in section D, when we do a horizontal line test on the original function, you'll notice that one of them fails. Let's see what we can figure out from that. So let's go back to section D. So it says to conduct a horizontal line test on the original function. So I am going to draw a green horizontal line through the original function. So if I draw a horizontal line through those functions, you'll notice that they would the um, graph of f of x would fail that horizontal line test. So let's put that here. So which one failed? f of x failed the horizontal line test because a horizontal line that I drew could um, touch that twice. So what that means is that a horizontal line test, we'll abbreviate it with HLT, can determine if the inverse will be a function. So rather than having to plot the inverse function, we can do the horizontal line test on the original function, and that'll tell us if the inverse would fail the vertical line test. All right. We also know that when inverse functions, so in the ENF, we saw that when inverse functions are plugged into each other, they're composed. That means that the result that we get is x. Right? No matter how we composed them, f of g of x, g of f of x, when we simplified, we got x. And then last thing is some notation. And the notation is that the inverse function can also be denoted as f to the negative 1 of x. So that's the way we denote it. All right, that is inverse functions. We'll see you next time.